and welcome to Fantastic Freebies and Where to Find Them. My name is Jenny Phillips and I'm glad you've joined me today. This is an NC Bold 22, uh, one of the summer presentations. So this is just a video recording and I'm so glad you could join me virtually. You can access this presentation by either scanning the QR code using the bit.ly shortened link there or what I'm going to do really quickly to give you just quick access is paste that link in the chat box. So you can click on that and access the link that way. Again, i um, just going to give you a second to access that presentation. And um, before we move on, I did put the bit.ly link, though, on a, a few more slides in. So if we move on, just know that that link will be there for you if you need it. So again, I'm Jenny Phillips, and there's that link again at the top. I'm the Instructional Technology Facilitator at Parkway School in Boone, and that's in Watauga County. Um, I'm thrilled to be an NC Bold ambassador this summer, and you can find me on Twitter. Uh, our school is probably close to, it'll be close to 650 students. It's a K-8 school, and I'm beginning my fifth year there. And one of the things that I needed to do when I first started was to design my own coding slash makerspace class on little to no budget. So the more I use these resources that I'm getting ready to share with you, um, the more I had teachers come to me and ask about the resources and if they could use them with their students on their own. So we're going to chat about some of these resources today and hopefully you'll find a couple or few that you can take back with you. But before we dive in, let's look at our, our do a mood check. Um, if we were live, I would have you hold up a finger, how you feeling today. Um, you know, if you're watching this during the summer, you might be a three, but I hope that everybody's at least a three, four or five and, um, and awake and ready to go. Um, this is my dog, Millie. So she has lots of moods and, uh, just think about which which Millie mood represents you today as we're going along. OK, so here we go. Uh, one of the things that I like to do when I am attending any kind of session is I like to create a bookmark folder and store all of the information in that that folder and bookmark my sites so I can go back and look at them later. So one quick housekeeping uh, item to do is if you would go ahead and create a bookmark folder under bookmark manager and go to new folder and then you can name it like um, fantastic freebies or nc bold 22 and then you can throw all your your resources and sites in there again here's the bit.ly link if you need it okay so let's talk about our goals for this session we are going to analyze and evaluate some of the coding and digital makerspace activities as we go through this time together and we're going to have some time to play around in our playground environment with the the tools and resources we cover and as you're going through this playground time um you you know if we were live you could collaborate with those in your group but at the end of our session we're going to have a padlet uh, for those virtual that you can kind of jump on and collaborate virtually all right so again, this is Fantastic Freebies and Where to Find Them, a coding and digital makerspace resource exploration. There's that bit.ly link. So our first resource that we're going to talk about is code.org. And before we go into that, I want you to notice that at the bottom of each of these slides is a little link. If um, when during that playground time, if you want to go back through the presentation and click on that link, you can easily access the sites that you choose to play around with. So I really love code.org. This was one of the first ones that I started using. It's one of my favorites. Um, this is kind of a snapshot. I'm not going to read these things to you of the things that I like about it. But what I do want to do is jump on over to code.org live. So if you don't have a, a, an account, you can easily create one. I'm going to click sign in. <clears throat> and I always sign in with Google. And it's linked to my work account. So when you first log in, <clears throat> you're going to kind of be at your um, 
dashboard. And this is kind of like command central, you know, for code.org. If you have classes set up, you will see them listed down here. You can see a bunch of my classes. If you need to create a new class, that's right here under create section. And it's very easy to do. Um, those of you that are a Google Classroom district, you can import that roster. I uh, we are not anymore. So I for my younger kids, I use the picture password. Um, for the older kids, I have them have a secret word and then I, I print out um, the login and, and they have had no trouble logging in. So I'm just going to cancel out of there. Just wanted to, to kind of show you how to set up a class and the options that you have, depending on how you want to set it up. You'll, you'll be able to name your class and pick the grade. Um, let me just go back to that real quick. So if I were doing a picture class, here's where you would name it, like first grade or, you know, Miss miss jones class or whatever and then you pick your grade and then you'd select the course which you're going to talk about in a little bit the courses now um i do not turn pair programming on because we are one-to-one -one district so that's kind of up to you um whether you want to do that okay and then you click save and it, it will move on all right so let's scroll down the page a little bit here and look at some of the resources at the bottom. I love that they have the teacher community and I love that they have professional learning. Um, just some things that you might want to dive into later. So here are some of the courses listed here, but let's jump over to our course catalog here. So in the course catalog, again, I mentioned that, it, you know, you've got some some things to use with K-12. So that's pretty awesome. If you want to know more about a course, it kind of has that drop down. You just click it. It gives you an audience recommendation and, and just some other information about it, like how many uh, hours it might take, some different languages, if you want to explore that option. Um, but, you know, in the course catalog, if you want to... Um, see the lessons and and really dive into it you click on view course so in view course i just want you to notice that there are these teacher resources here so let's let that load um in the under the teacher resources it kind of gives you some standards mapping i love the course vocabulary that debugging guide in case you know you need that and then some a teacher forum if you're one that wants to print out there's that option too and then over to the right um what's really cool and i use this feature a lot is the view lesson plan so when you click view lesson plan um i always you know share the objectives with my students and we we always do some kind of little vocabulary activity at the beginning i love how it has this teaching guide um and then it kind of lets you work through it yourself so um the other thing that i want to talk about in code.org is so you've got this whole express course here which is pretty lengthy a lot of times I will use this feature here called visible or hidden, and I will keep the lessons further down hidden from the students until I'm ready for them to see those and unlock them. So let's say we're, we're focusing on lesson one today and I, I don't want them to move on yet. Then I will keep the rest hidden and um, and use that feature a lot. All right. So let's go back over here and look at our next item. So our next um, resource we're gonna visit is called Code Combat. And um, this is something that the students really love because it's kind of sort of like a quest. You have a, a goal, you have something you have to do, and um, you know it will tell you goal success. Um, <clears throat> the one thing, you know, is there are free and paid lessons. I have only used the, the free part of it and it has given me enough to, to use and work with my students, you know, as I go throughout the year. So let's jump on over to the Code Combat tab. And again, if you don't, you know, if you need to sign up, you can sign up. So I always click that I'm an educator. Um, if, if I'm setting up an account and you can go on now, 
one thing I do want to say is uh, code combat uh, kind of has another section called Ozaria, and that is really something to check out too if you use code combat and you want want a little bit more. But we're not going to cover that today, but I just wanted to put that bug in your ear. So I'm going to click log in and I'm going to sign in with Google. Again, it's going to go through um, my Google account. Sometimes it takes a couple of, of times to, to get in here. Um, but when you're in here, you're going to see it's kind of a different um, when I show you a lesson, it, it's a little bit different platform. So again, this takes us to um, our dashboard. When we log in, gives you a snapshot of your current classes and you can see my classes for this year. It lets you set up a new class. Um, again, easy setup, C click create new class. Again, you have that you know, handy dandy link to Google Classroom, you name it if you want. Now, I do want to point out to you, you get to pick your programming language. Um, the two that I always pick, and um, I kind of go back and forth, on um, first quarter, we we hit JavaScript, and on third quarter, we hit Python. So, And then you can set your, your other options down here as you're setting up the classes. Um, so again, just pay attention to the programming language that you um, pick. So let's go over to course guides. and. Um, look at the course guides. So this is the one that I, is the free one that I use is the intro to computer science. And again, you know, you can check, check your language here, but I love the lesson slides and the fact that it opens and it kind of loads them in your, your Google drive and you can just open the slides here. Very easy to access and copy over. So there are the slides. Um, also, on the right, you can go straight to any level here in this and play any level if you want to preview it. Um, so let's just click on level two and play level. And th this is kind of what it looks like. You have those goals, avoid the spikes, collect the gems, and it's quest based. And you can kind of see it gives you some tips. It lets you choose to start level. I'm going to go back to courses. So um, that's, you know, we covered how to set up a class, the course guides. Let's hop on over to the resource hub. So in the resource hub, um, I've used the teacher getting started guide when I first got started using it. Uh, I have not looked at the student quick start guide, but that might be uh, something to, to tap into. Um, and again, uh, just Scroll down and, and see what sparks your interest. And, you know, I would definitely recommend, you know, using that teacher getting started guide if you'd like to look at that. Um, again, I've only used the free portion. Uh, you're, you know, I, I have not looked much at the paid version yet because I've always had enough with the free short version. All right. Let's look at our next uh, item and that is Scratch. And many of you, Scratch has been around for a long time. Uh, many of my students have used it and some of you have used it as well. So let's just kind of talk briefly about that. <clears throat> I just want to make sure you guys are aware of uh, some of the features and uses. First of all, if you don't have a teacher account, you know, you can request one. So I think you have to join Scratch and um, you can you know click on for educators but if you do have your account you can go ahead and sign in um you again this is kind of your dashboard you can quickly access your classes um you can begin you know creating from scratch if you want so when you click that the create button it will take you right to that coding platform um, you will see your little scratch cat and you can start creating. Um, depending on the age of the students, I usually have them complete a tutorial before um, they, they get, you know, go, go on there. So um, again, some of you, you know, may have used this, some of you have not. When you click on explore, 
the next item, you can explore other people's projects. And so if you want to, you can click on it and um, you have this remix button if a student wants to just remix it and and make their own. Um, back to the main page. In Create, you will see that you can access <clears throat> those tutorials from the Create button if you'd like. So that's the Tutorials button, and you can kind of look at those and have your students choose a tutorial to do. Um, so let's go back here for just a second. <clears throat> um, one of the, the tabs that I, I really use a lot is the Ideas tab. And this is kind of, like I said, you, you can access the tutorials through Create, or you can choose a tutorial here and it lists the same ones that you saw before. Um, and you can scroll down, you can look at them by category. Um, the other thing in ideas, uh, let me get back to that page. Um, the getting started kind of helped me a lot, that little tutorial. Also, the activity guides, my students have really liked some of these because it, it kind of walks you through. We've definitely done, we always start with animate a name. So that one's been a lot of fun for us. The other thing is you have these scratch cards, uh, coding cards that you can download as a PDF. And if you want, want to print those out, the starter projects deserve a look too. Um, and, you know, you've just got this different things that you can do all throughout Scratch that would be really any, any of those would be a good starting point. But I definitely make use of all the guides, any of the help guides I can. Okay, let's move on to Tinker. So Tinker is another tool that I use. And again, it has a free section and the paid section. Um, and again, when you click there, you can join for free. Or <clears throat> if you have an account, just be aware, you know, always click teacher, change it to teacher, and you can sign in with Google, uh, like I do on all the others. Um, when you log in, again, it takes you to your dashboard. And as you can see, these are my three middle school classes. <clears throat> I use this a lot with that age group. Again, it's easy to add a class. You just click add a class. Um, and then it kind of tells you, you you get three three free coding courses when you create a classroom. Uh, it tells you about some of those act, hour of code activities. And again, you can link it to your Google Classroom. So, you know, that's, um, that's very helpful if you're a Google Classroom district. So let's click on um course and check out courses right here to the to the left and check out some of the free courses available so this one's grade three five geared toward that uh, this one's six eight and i have used both of these program programming 100 and programming 300 haven't taught at the high school level in a while so i haven't used that one that one um is new to me when you preview it it takes you to you know description of the course tells you what's included talks about the topics again this is what it includes and it takes you through these tabs you have got the lessons here you can assign them if you have a class you can look at the lesson plan which i've done a lot and as you scroll down it talks about just the whole plan talks about the vocabulary. You've got the objectives there. Really love that. And um, and those those buttons at the top, it will let you you know walk through the program if you want to preview it. Then I love this feature because you've got the answer keys, and that's always helpful. And then another feature is those class presentations. And again, those are in slides, and you can preview them. Um, and use them. I've used the Tinker slides a lot as I've been working with classes. 
and that's taken a bit to load because there's lots of graphics. So again, it lets you go through and kind of uh, give your students a preview and, and give some instruction as to what you'll be doing that day. All righty. Um, let me see if there's anything else I've missed on Tinker. Oh, yeah, the Hour of Code. So, um, one of the things uh, that I love is the Hour of Code. So, over here to the left, under Courses, we're going to click on Resources. And like I said, if you create a class, you get these the Hour of Code resources free. And there are lots of different activities under Hour of Code. Um, one of the things, if you'll notice, too, is you can filter by grade. You can filter by these different categories. And um, I have used some of these STEM ones, you know, as a partner, partnering with uh, teachers in some of their content instruction as well. So this area is definitely worth a look. All right. So let's talk about Make Code Arcade. Now, this is kind of a Microsoft platform. And let's just go back here. Um, there are different areas that I use on this. And one of the features that, that students really like is designing their sprites. So, and that's kind of like a pixelated, um, kind of reminds me of the Minecraft characters, you know. But yeah, they really get creative in designing their sprite. So let's pop over there. Now, I do not sign into this site because we are not a Microsoft district, but I still, we're still able to use it. Um, and every time I go back to it, it does have my work there that, that I've saved before, but it's really not saving it under a login. So think about game design when you're thinking about using this with your students. I've used several just different elements on this site. The one thing you might want to do is begin with a skill map. And this beginner skill map is a good place to start. And if it will help them kind of learn the platform and you can go from there. I've also used the tutorials. They love um like I always start with the first one, chase the pizza. And then once we get through it, I kind of let them hack it up and design their own sprite within there. They can do that. Um, I've also used some of the game design concepts down here. And um, let's see, the lessons. I've used some of the lessons down there as well. So students who are interested in game design will probably really like this site and they'll really like the feature of designing their own sprite. We've had a lot of fun with that. And again, um, before we move on from Make Code Arcade onto our, our digital makerspace resources, um, I just want to you know point out, I do use all the free resources on all these sites. The other thing that I want to kind of point out to you is I always preview the lessons and I work through them I just do that on my own um, just to kind of see where any um, pitfalls might be. And I'm really familiar with, you know, what the students are going to encounter. And it doesn't take long um, to work through them. And it, it's really kind of interesting and neat to see what they're doing and, and where they might run into trouble. And then, then you're more prepared to kind of help them. So let's go on, though, to our digital makerspace. So our digital makerspace um, this kind of, this is the final fantastic freebie that I want to share with you. So this is just developed on a good old Google site. And I designed it based on one that I saw online. Um, it's kind of just a digital makerspace site. The main reason why I designed this site is because we were virtual. We started the year virtually that year, all first quarter and maybe part of second quarter. And I needed some activities for my students to do that were virtual. So the students like this so much, I decided to keep it as an item on, on my digital choice boards. Um, so let's, let's look at, at my site here. So I'm gonna go to home. 
And this is the home page of my digital makerspace site. As you can see, I've got a build button, a draw, music, code, and engineering and designing. And I'm always looking to add on other, other selections. If you guys have any great ideas, share them definitely on the Padlet. Um, so the students, this is just kind of a, a time for them to go into different digital activities that they're interested in. So if you click on build, You've got some virtual building blocks, the bricks, build a house, um, build uh, um, the habitat maker. If you go to draw, you have different digital um, activities that, that they can use to draw. If you go to music and sound, there are different digital activities that students can um, used to investigate and explore sound the coding part you will see some links to some of the resources that we just covered and a couple more and then on the engineer and design section um, there's different activities um, that i found online where they can go and and design some things so again this is just all digital resources and a good old google site all this is free um, and I just, you know, share the link with the students when we're having a digital makerspace day or I will put the link in a choice board and let that be one of the choices. So that's fantastic freebies, some of the free coding resources, the digital makerspace resource, and now it's playground time. So. I have shared with you a link on this playground time folder and it will take you to a Google folder and there are some cards for each of the resources that we just covered and when you click on the cards it's just kind of a snapshot of some of the things I mentioned that you might want to go investigate and you can just virtually you can pull this card up in a tab and leave it open and flip back to it. So again, there's code combat, code.org, play around with digital makerspace, the make code arcade, the scratch card, and the tinker card. So if you're in person, you're gonna have these cards that are um, on paper and you'll get to come and choose a couple of the cards. So right now, I'd like for you to um, spend some time in the playground and I'm going to set the timer and I'm going to just mute my mic and you guys can play around with the those activities. Pick one or two. I'd, I'd like for you to get two in and then I'll join back join you back in just a few minutes. Okay, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you had uh, enough time to to investigate at least a couple of those resources or activities. If not, I'm hoping that you bookmark them and you'll be able to go back to them later and um, and play around with them some more and dive deeper into them. So let's think about for a minute how we can uh, use these in the classroom with our students uh, to support learning. Um, or is there something that you learned about one of these that you saw that piqued your interest? And if you would hop on over to the Padlet, again, there's the bit.ly or there's the link here or there's the QR code. And if you'll click and it should take you to a Padlet with columns. So each one of these tools has a column code.org, code combat, scratch, tinker, make code arcade, and digital makerspace. And if you would just kind of click and just add something that you learned or something that you saw that uh, you might want to use with students or something that you think your students might like about using this, um, uh, just any kind of thought you had about how you can take uh, and use what you, what you learned about one of those tools. Okay. So, Thank you so much for, um, for joining me today. And um, I hope you'll be able to take and use some of this stuff. Uh, it's been great being with you virtually. And I hope to see you maybe at something in the future in person. Thanks again.